Welcome to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boom and Bust channel, Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Jordan and Howard and these rumors and stuff. So, uh, if you haven't heard, as I'm sure most Bears fans have heard, though, there was this little uh, rumor going around that the Bears might trade Jordan Howard or that there was some issues going on between them or whatever, whatever, because... Jordan Howard removed his bear stuff from his Instagram. So uh, pictures and whatever, I don't know. I don't kick it on Instagram. But he removed everything relating to the bears. And so people started to speculate and start rumors that he might be on his way out or that he might want to be on his way out or, you know, that he was having issues with the coach, that whatever. And so uh, that whole thing went around. Now, I think the whole thing is is silly, and I think a lot of, even though social media is an important thing, I still think it's silly for people to jump to conclusions uh, based off those things, especially with no other facts. Now, fans, you know, fans speculate, but I'm talking about like journalism, like, uh, or journalists and, you know, people who are supposed to be professionals, but they're writing articles and, you know, starting uh, chatter about something that is complete speculation with no real or even significant, you know, uh, evidence. So that to me is just silly. And I know a lot of people, uh, kind of point back at Allen Robinson wearing a Cubs jersey on Instagram. And it was, Oh man, he's going to the bears and he came to the bears. See, I, I had people say, see, I told you that like, no, him coming to the bears has nothing to do with that picture at all. And that was before free agency opened up. I I trust and believe he could have been wearing a customized number 15 Allen Robinson Chicago Bears jersey in that picture. Had the next day when uh, free agency opened, he got a number larger from another team. He would have been gone. So let's let's not kid ourselves about uh, any of that. Uh, and if you want to suggest that he had a contract or agreed to a deal prior to, okay, that's fine. You can speculate that that's illegal and nobody will admit that. So you can feel, <laughs> you can feel that way if you want. But anyway, uh, we do recognize that athletes use their social media platform, uh, to, uh, express themselves in this generation. So people read into things more often than not, um, I don't know. Honestly, the whole rumor meal about um, the Instagram scandal or whatever, I don't really care about. I mean, honestly, one way or the other, uh, I think this is more about uh, talking about Jordan Howard and the possibility of trade. I mean, this is a platform for us Bears fans to talk, to get together and conversate. Uh, we talked about a couple players so far, you know, inadvertently, but I felt like this is a good time. Might as well. We, everybody had their two cents on Kevin White. So now let's talk about Jordan Howard because at the end of the day, whether that scandal was, tr- or I keep saying scandal, whether that rumor was true or not, I wouldn't, I wasn't moved either way. Jordan Howard being traded. Okay. Now let me be very clear before people start attacking. I'm not saying I don't like Jordan Howard. I'm not saying I want him gone. Not saying that he can't be effective. Not saying any of that. But if you ask my personal opinion, Jordan Howard, I think he's good. I don't think he's a necessity. Now, that comes with the position. And uh, people get it confused between draft value and positional value. I I don't... Or not even positional value, but just a, a value to the overall game. I don't believe that running backs aren't valuable. I believe that in the game of football, the running game and running backs are very uh, instrumental. As far as draft value, though, it's different uh, because there's a lot of running backs. And it's just it's hard to reach for running backs when you can get equal production um at, at minimum in, in the later rounds. Now, I still believe they're star running backs, but how much is a star running back worth? You know, we have to ask those questions because, um, you, the run game is important, but 
this position, much like receiver, is extremely predicated on someone else. Now, football is ultimate team sport, but there's some positions that really rely on others a lot more. Running back is one that is very clear cut for a lot of people because the line has to be there. Like, if the line isn't there, more times than not, a, a great running back isn't going to produce. And so, more times than not, when the great line is there, an average running back can produce. Not to say that's going to make you look like a star and hit home runs and everything, but for the most part, you know, it's just a physical position. You got physical traits, um, and if the line is blocking there, you can do what you got to do. So it's just, it's kind of a position thing. And so I'm not knocking Jordan Howard as a person or anything. It's just a position thing. Um, there are a lot of running backs, and if you build your line up correctly, then you can get running backs in there to be effective. And so, but out of the grand scheme of things, just talking about as a running back, I think he's good. I think he's really good. Um, I would say top 15 backs, most definitely. Probably top 10. Wouldn't say he's a top five back, though. Even I, I know some people feel that way, but I don't. I mean, you look at the physical traits. Uh, he's not a burner with a second gear that can, uh, perform pull away speed and get away for a home run. He's not a shifty guy that's going to make uh, people miss with elusiveness. Um, and then the whole big thing is the catching. And I don't want to get too far into a rant because I start thinking about it earlier and start diving deep into the hole. But I just got to say that running backs catching the ball is not as crazy as people make it seem. Like, they make it seem like it's some whole new part of the sport. The news flash is that's always been there. People didn't utilize it, but running backs being open in the flats have always been there. Um, one thing I learned long time ago, um, the first defense I came up in, we was quarters or that's cover four for people. If you visualize it on Madden, but it doesn't work the way it does on Madden. Uh, pretty much your corners are responsible for anything deep and the safeties play a little bit more, uh, loose and towards the run. But the point is that everything is deep. That's what the first priority is. So we were always taught to the uh, players that we give up the short stuff and rally to the ball. So, you know, hitches, swing routes, all that stuff to the running back. We rally to the ball on that. And um, even in cover two and uh, cover three, you got a lot of similar um, ide- ideologies. And my point is that the flats have always been the first thing defenses give up. And so while uh, you start to get spread and we start to stretch the defense out more, all these bubble screens and tunnel screens and all that stuff, and as you continue to stretch the defense out wide um, and worried about deep uh, speed, then, of course, it, the natural option became to go to the flat, which was always wide open. And if you're running deep concepts, the longer you can hold the ball, the more space the running back is open to. So um, it, it's really just catching the ball. I mean, the the, the running back swing uh, screens, the flare routes, arrows, whatever you want to call it, those have always been there. That stuff's not new. It's just, you know, really, uh, like I said, as you continue to spread defenses out, uh, people are now utilizing the flat more. Uh, so as far as a running back having to catch, that's not new. Like they always say, oh, he, he's dynamic. He brings you a lot of versatile skills. Either you can catch or you can't. That's all it comes down to. You got to be able to run the ball, point blank, period, and then you can catch it or you can't. I mean, that that's not that dynamic. But the whole point is, not even talking about your ability in open space, Jordan Howard just can't catch, point blank, period. So even if it's basic stuff you want to use them for and you're not using this whole uh, running back centric pass thing, you can't really count on him because he just doesn't catch well. And so that's a big, not a big knock, but that's a knock. That's, that's part of a game he doesn't have. But like a lot of people try to blow it up in the media as if, Oh my God, you know, that's such the thing now. Like, okay, whatever. But the point is he doesn't have that skill set either way you look at it. So I think, like I said, I think he's really good. 
Um, I watch Jordan Howard, and you know, there's people who pop up. You don't know, you don't know. You need to watch Jordan. I watch. I, again, I do this draft stuff. I, Jordan Howard's at UAB before the program closed. And then he finished out his college career at uh, IU, at Indiana University, and what was a spread shotgun run type offense. If you remember Tevin Coleman from uh, Atlanta Falcons. He was there right before Jordan Howard. So very similar offenses that they came out of, just a different type of runner. And um, he was very, really effective out of the shotgun. And like I said, I, I believe he can be effective in what we want to do. What we assume Matt Nagy wants to do, uh, I believe we can do. I mean, they Kansas City, if you want to use them as the barometer, they ran a lot more under center uh, power type runs than people give them credit for. But they do like to use the spread type looks too and get in the shotgun. And I think that Jordan might be a little more comfortable with it uh, because it is one direction. It is. I mean, if you run in zone stuff, there's cutbacks, but any other type of power or gap scheme out of shotgun, it is okay. Hit this gap. When you're doing it out of the backfield, like with a handoff, then there becomes a little more up to the running back where they can make cuts or readjust and I just don't think he does that well I think he is north and south and so I I think he'll be comfortable out of shotgun again the passing stuff might not be there for him but I think a hundred percent he'll be effective especially as we continue to build the line but the question is uh is he more valuable as a trade piece so I talked about a trade proposal with Preston Smith and Kyle Fuller, all that. And it was fun, but I think people got a little too offended for whatever reason, just throwing out a, a what if scenario. Because my next what if trade was going to be Jordan Howard getting traded somewhere. Uh, but I didn't feel like, you know, going through all that. So I was thinking about Jordan Howard though, because he's a fourth round pick. Like we said, we're not paying him a lot of money. He's valuable right now. Uh, um, not to say that he, is an elite back, but he's very valuable for somebody that doesn't have a viable run option. And so in order, you know, really uh, you bought him low as a fourth round pick, sell him high. And really it's capitalizing on his value. It's a compliment to him more than anything. But, I, you know, I could see that. That's a smart move. If there's pieces out there uh, at bigger positions that we can get, absolutely. There's a, a thousand running backs in the league. There's a thousand coming in this draft. Plus, you got Tariq Cohen already as a uh, spot duty. So, yeah, I would absolutely not be heartbroken if they traded Jordan Howard. Um, again, this is all just rumor and stuff. They could turn around and trade him while I'm making this episode. Who knows? But I still don't think that Instagram stuff has anything to do with anything. But if it did turn out where he was traded, then okay, he's traded. I mean, I'm fine with it, to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not super uh, attached to him. I do think he's a good, tough player. But, uh, you know, I mean, he has his fans. And I'm sure people go in the comment section how much how much they love Jordan Howard. But for me personally, I, I, I really like Jordan. If he stays, of course, I'm a root for him. If they traded him, if they traded him for another running back or something, that'd be I, I wouldn't be happy about that. But if they got a defensive piece or offensive lineman or some more picks, Okay, more power to you, uh, Ryan Pace. I think that's a good move. So definitely want to hear what you guys think, though. Um, so actually, I want to get into this now. Might as well, since I'm recording. Um, the Cam Meredith stuff. I was going to do this in a separate video. Might as well do it now because I don't know when the Bears are going to make a decision. So I'm going to just try to get it recorded. But uh, for those that didn't hear, Cam Meredith uh, signed an offer sheet with the New Orleans Saints, Ryan Pace's old team. Uh, and I believe it's right under 10 million for two years, but it is, um, uh, over a 5 million guarantee. And so the tender that the Bears gave Cam Meredith would result in us losing him for nothing. We wouldn't get any compensation. And that just depends on how much the tender is. So if we would have signed him at a higher number for this year, then we would have got compensation if we lost him in the form of draft picks. However, Ryan Pace didn't do that. And so now if we don't match this two-year $10 million deal, we'll lose Cam Meredith for free. So there's a lot to talk about with this. There's a lot to talk about, especially on the heels of Kevin White, because 
there's some people that just are tired of the, <laughs> the Bears paying people that got injury history. And I get it. I, I totally get it. I don't, I, I don't think, um, players with injury histories or that have coming off an injury mean they can't play. That's definitely not the case. People just don't want to invest a lot in them. And I understand that when you talk about bargaining power, that's, that, that's real. I understand that when you're talking about uh dollars and cents, but when you're talking about on the field, it doesn't affect me. Not as a coach, not as a fan. I, I mean, you got, again, like, unless you got some type of condition, like where you got degenerative knees now, or, you know, you hurt yourself to the point that thing's not going to heal right or whatever that, then, you know, that is, that is something you got to consider. But if it's not a condition, if it was just an injury, you heal from it and you back, then I'm not worried. Yeah, anybody can be susceptible to injury. I don't get why people keep talking about this. Like, look at Jadavion Clowney. There was some test they just started the year he got drafted. And it was basically like measuring your muscle fibers and all this to tell how durable you would be. And he scored off the charts, basically said he'll never get injured. Guess what happened his uh, rookie year? Injured. Missed the whole year. And so... I don't want to like hear this stuff. Like you can always get hurt, and uh, yes, it affects bargaining power. You coming off injury, okay? Yes, as the team, I'm gonna try to pay you less money. I get that, but as a fan wanting a player to come to the team or you know be on the roster, I'm not worried about that again, unless it's a chronic condition that you now have. So, um, Cam Meredith coming off the ACL is a nasty injury, whatever. But if he's healed, if a team wants to pay him, if the doctors say clear, then I think he's worth it. I, that's not a lot of money. We haven't spent a lot of money. Uh, I envision Allen Robinson and Taylor Gabriel with Cam Meredith, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people say we still could get a guy in the draft to round this thing out, or we could take a shot at Jordan Matthews, whatever the case may be. And, you know, give Kevin White a shot and we'd be good to go. And you can. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to tell you you have to get Cam Meredith. Again, I went to school with the guy. We're not friends or anything. He don't know me, but I went to school. I got affinity for my Redbirds. I thought he played very well. That's what it comes down to. A lot of people want to keep blaming Brian Pace and blaming players for being hurt last year. But with all that aside, remember what Cam Meredith was coming into the season before that injury. He was our guy. We were very excited. And I'm not going to, you know, people play this game with Kevin White. Yeah, he hasn't played a lot. But what I did see in this handful of snaps or what I did see in the preseason, well, if we're going to play that game, then Cam Meredith was working to be a beast. I mean, I thought he looked like a, a, a peer number one in that preseason and made Mike Glennon look on time. He made Trubisky, uh, well, not Trubisky, but he made Mike Glennon look on time. Uh, and I thought that he definitely was going to be a viable option that going forward, not just a viable option, but a really good option. And then bringing in Allen Robinson just helps him even more, especially with Gabriel in the slot. So I'm not going to say we need him, but I thought he would be a great piece to have. If you can get them at a low price, even at this price, two years, 10 mil, low price for a guy that you think can do it. And if he uh, doesn't pull it out, you don't lose a lot of money. So really, it's the best of both worlds right now. Um, but the 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 uh, truth of the matter is you got other options. Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel are now on the team. And now you got the draft coming up. So there are options where you can let Cam Meredith go. Because you might not want to play another, pay another player that's coming off ACL. Um, as far as Ryan Pace and his tender and, uh, letting him, you know, walk for free. So people say if they didn't want to sign him to that high of a tender, they most likely don't want to match the offer and bring him in at a, uh, pretty much the same number. I think it was 5.9 or 4.9, something like that, around that number for the tender. And this would give him a guarantee over five million. So a lot of people think they won't match it. Um, and numbers wise, it would make sense because they didn't sign him to such a tender, but it sucks again. Like the way they sign in these guys where we would get no compensation. A lot of people want to keep saying, well, they did it that way so they can, the market could be set. 
whatever set your own market you know how to i mean yes you want to uh let other people uh kind of put the number out there but again you got to have your own value on these player and like if you have a value in a number and you're waiting to see a team basically give you a reason to go under that number then that's not a great way to do business. You're just trying to lowball everybody. I mean, because that's what you're saying. You because if the team gives a ridiculous contract, you're not going to match it because you're going to say, "Oh, that number's too high." So obviously, there is a market in your head of where you're willing to go. You're just trying to look for a reason to go under that number, and that's that's not a great way to do business with everybody. So um, I would have liked to see them do a little smart. I mean, set it to a number. F- that if a team wants to take a swing, that you get something back in return. It's the same thing I said with Kyle Fuller. Uh, so it, it would suck to see him leave. It would suck even more to see him leave for nothing. But uh, that's the situation we're in. And I would like to see him come back, but I don't think it's an absolute necessity. So I'd like to hear what everybody else got to say. So tell me about uh, Jordan Howard. Do you like Jordan Howard? Do you think he's amazing? Do you think he's just good? Do we have to keep him? Would you be okay if we trade him? Tell me about Karen Meredith. Should we let him walk? Do you want to see him come back? Do we need him to come back? Go to the comment section. Let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe. Start the conversation. Share it around. And remember, stay up and bear down.